like to call to order the September 18th, 2018 Lake Mills City Council meeting. And I would like you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Fields? Here. Mrs. Fritch? Here. Mr. Foster? Here. Mr. Fritch? Here. And Ms. Schmidt previously informed staff that she'd be unavailable this evening. Okay. Corrections and approval of the City Council minutes from September 4th, 2018 and September 12th, 2018. Now, do we need to take them separately? No, we don't. Okay, good. Then um, I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So move. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay, thank you. Correspondence. Anybody on the council have correspondence that they'd like to share? Kind of a quiet week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing. Okay. Nothing on my part either. Um, I did have one um, person contact me with some questions being new in the city, but uh, working on getting all the answers for that person. But that was uh, the extent of my correspondence. Questions in public comment. Um, the public is encouraged to address the council at this time regarding items on the agenda. Public comment may also be made at this time on items that are not on the agenda if you have registered with the city clerk before the meeting was called to order. The state's open meeting law discourages action by the council on items not listed on the agenda. Please keep your comments limited to three minutes and state your name and address when starting your comments and fill out the sign-in sheet provided on the podium. So if anyone would like to speak to the council at this time, if you're on an agenda item that we're going to be talking about later, uh, we can suspend the rules at that time to let people other than staff speak at that time. So is there anyone who would like to speak under public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll close public comment and move to the city manager's report. I provided you with the August budget, so I remember when the auditor calls and asks you some questions, yes, we do provide those documents. I uh, provided you with the check register also, and the monthly PD report. Um, <coughs> Public Works has moved the uh, composting forward, and that's continuing to be worked on before the Public Works Board. Uh, we. We're in the process of ordering some new signage for the um, current site. Um, South Main Street is still being worked on by the gas company. So you'll notice that they're doing a lot of work out there yet. Um, Mulberry Street, uh, I, as I understand, the electric will be done next week. Wow. Are they going to move it from the one side to the other side next week? Yes. Wow. Okay. That's really fast. <laughs> street maintenance contracts um, we've been shifted to next Monday again which is the third Monday in a row we've been shifted to the next Monday um, they're all out in western Dane County and beyond fixing roads out there um, you'll note that every time they think they're going to come they send in a road crew to, to uh, grade the street again and then they call us up and tell us where the soft spots are. We go out fix, fix the soft spots, and then they're not. Then the paving crew doesn't show up. So there's their grading crew and our crew that does the soft spots are getting a little tired. 
And it's kind of a waste of time for our people. And theirs. I mean, they have a crew that comes in and does all that grading. Oh, they do the grading. They do the grading. we did the grading. No, they do it. They do the grading, then they call us and tell us to fix the soft spots. Oh, I get it. I'm sorry. And then we go out and fix the soft spots, and then the paving crew isn't ready yet. So So everybody's a little edgy. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. We're all going to pray for good weather. Uh, you noted the yeah. You noted the uh, line, street lining. Yeah. All right, that's been done. That's part of the sh- uh, contracts. Um, we are going to also mill and overlay, and the mill and overlay crew will still come in before the act- actual final paving crew comes in. So <clears throat> there'll be more streets to tore up. Um, the bike trail is still outstanding. We can't get to it until we get everything else done. We have a, a deadline with DNR to get that done by the end of November. Um, so that's something that's outstanding. Um, where is what is the bike trail? Yeah, that's what's that the, area from? No, what's causing the the clog on the bike trail project? Well, <clears throat> when we got the extension, we had all the other things that we were trying to get done: the the crack sealing and the mm-hmm. uh, fixing of the inlets and all that. Right. Then we got into the when the road got tilled, then we had to raise all the manholes and fix the storm uh, fix the storm sewers there, and we ran the storm sewer line up there and. We've been hauling yard waste a lot. Mm-hmm. And so we had a lot of things going on where, where um, we didn't have enough people to actually get out there. And it's been so wet. It's a, it's a gravel, it's a dirt and gravel. It runs through that cornfield out there. Mm-hmm. So it, it really needs some dry weather. And it also needs time for us to get to it. So <clears throat> we have a long list of items. Uh, there are three of them that are way at the bottom, and that's one of them. The other one's the library parking lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <clears throat> now who does the city own the library parking lot, or does the library own the library? The city it? owns the library. Okay, and the city owns the library parking lot too, don't we? Yes. Okay, as I had some people approach me, and and I said, I think the parking lot belongs to the city, because we used to have the police department on there. Yes. Yeah, it all belongs to the city. Okay. The only thing that the library owns are the books and. Okay, good. Well, sometimes things just don't get done as fast as we'd like, because of the weather, especially. Yeah, in this case, it's the weather. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> the Mangan development, the electric up there is done. They've poured the um, curb for the cul-de-sac, and they'll probably. <laughs> I don't know when they're going to get paved. <laughs> Uh, because of the weather again? Yes. That, I mean, I'm assuming that they're not going to have any better luck finding a paver than we are. Okay, that's what you're getting at. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what your point was. <laughs> We've been asked to run three-phase electric up to um, uh, Mansky Road. And so we've been developing some cost em- estimates and some... Um, concepts of how we could fix it. <clears throat> um, we looked at redoing the electric in commons, but I guess that'll be another conversation tonight. Uh, Crestview uh, has started building homes. So that eight lot subdivision we did earlier this year, that's in, in Brookstone. Um, they, they are pretty much up to date. We'll probably see another reduction in their financial guarantee at the next meeting. Um, haven't seen anything on North Shore. You know where North Shore is, right? That's the one up on County Highway B in mm-hmm. the town. It's 13 condos. Aren't they b- building already? No, haven't even started digging. Oh, okay. Thought I saw some. <laughs> 
Tonight, TID 7 is on the agenda. We've got everything we need for the styles annexation, but the final from the state. Um, so that'll be postponed tonight? Yeah, we'll do the third reading and then we'll table it until we actually get the sign off from the state. Shouldn't be long now. Um, the old water tower site, um, they've started leveling that. Oh. So you'll notice that uh, it's going to be much flatter and more. What, will they take any of the uh, equipment or the tubing and stuff like that out or what? Um, we're going to cut the ends off of the um, mains that run through there and cap them and then we'll discuss if we're going to put them back or not. Um, we need to, there's some fire hydrant relocation that needs to be done. There's a proposal to build a bunch of houses up there, three of them. And so instead of just having a dead end up there, we're looking at using the lot for a cul-de-sac. And uh, that would make it a lot easier for us to maintain the area and get the driveways in and out. And leveling off the, the water tower site also made it easier for them to build on one of the sites and shift. So. <laughs> have they been to planning commission with that idea yet um they won't need to go to the planning commission but they'll need to come to the council because um, they're going to need to buy about 10 feet of the one lot but all the other lots are are existing lots oh they just don't have houses on huh? actually one of them does oh. but they're going to tear that down and build okay. a new house and then they they have two vacant lots and they plan on selling 10 feet to the neighbor if we allow him to buy some from us because the neighbor's lot is awful narrow and he can't get a garage on it. Uh, we've had this conversation before, but I think at this point we, we've kind of moved on from the water tower site. Um, we're into the lead service lateral. Um, we sit, we've prepared a, another report Tomorrow we're visiting with the DNR again. Um, we're up to 68%, maybe even a little bit more, on uh, how many of the required inspections we have to do. So we're getting pretty close. Uh, we're also meeting with them on corrosion control. Um, we've, <clears throat> if you remember, we hired engineers to do a study for us and make a determination on how we would um, determine what our appropriate uh, phosphate level would be in the water. And they put together this study um, and they're submitting it to, and the DNR is reviewing it tomorrow and telling us if they're going to approve it or not. Um, we had an improved radium testing uh, requirement. I'm assuming that they'll ask us where we're at, but we've got our first two packer tests done. We'll wait 30 days and then we'll see if we need to do a third. But that was done at well number four at the corner of Franklin and Owen Street. So you might have seen a little rain, extra rain there. <laughs> uh, the AMI is moving forward. Um, WPBI is actually going to start installing electric meters for us at, at no charge for a couple for a couple months, was it? Uh, cross connections. I want to encourage everybody who's got a commercial facility of any type that uh, they need to have their cross connection inspection done and submitted. Uh, we've been we've sent out letters and reminder letters and. Uh, Pretty soon we'll actually have to come out and start sending uh, citations because we're required by the DNR to have these uh, on file. We have produced a new water model. And basically what that does is tell us what the water pressures and flows are in pretty much every fire hydrant in the city. They're 505, wow. and the uh, uh, pressures range from about 42 to 75, and the water flows range from 600 to 5,000 
gallons per minute. Uh, PSC is still looking at our water rate. I assume we will have a public hearing on that here in the next couple weeks. Can I ask a question on the fire hydrant? Sure. The the scope, the span between the, you know, the two items you mentioned, is that span there because of the need of water? Like, is it higher in the industrial park, or is it, you know, it or is it just that's how it ends up? Uh, they're a combination of issues, but most of it has to do with um, elevation okay. and size of pipe okay. and age of pipe. So let's say <clears throat> the low the areas that were in the six to seven hundred, they have six inch water mains, but they're acting like they're four inch. So I'm assuming that there's a lot of corrosion on the inside. Mm. So if and you're getting old. five thousand gallons per, they're older. Yes. They're in the 110-year-old category. <laughs> yeah, okay. the, if you're getting 5,000 gallons per minute, you've got a, a pretty solid 10 to 12-inch loop attached to it coming from two directions. Okay. Um, so that's, and the pressure is basically a, how high you are. The lower you are compared to the, to the top of the water tower, the better pressure you have. The higher up you are, the less pressure you have. Oh, makes sense. So... Okay, thank you for answering that question. Yep. We're discussing a, a, an agreement with, actually it's kind of an operational procedure with the Lake Mills EMS for responding. Steve probably knows quite a bit about that, but it, <clears throat> um, right now we're having a little bit of difficulty getting it arranged internally. Um, I still haven't got anything on the staffing strategies report from the fire department and any change in the POP program. We are having a emergency operations center class on January 16th and 17th. And I hope you know that you're supposed to be taking some of these classes and that you might want to talk to Misty because you can take them online. Yeah, the 800 class you have to take in advance, correct? Yes. But I all elected officials have to have a 100. I believe it's 100, 700. Yeah, I think that's it. No, I think just the seven. two, the one and the 700. Huh. <laughs> First I've heard of it. All staff is, is um, all senior staff has to be up to, we're all up to 400 plus, um, and we have to have on file all our certificates. Mm -hmm. That I knew. I didn't know we were part of that. Yep. Council so listed. all of us are supposed to do that? Well, you just need the 100 and the 700. And you can do that online. Misty can work with you to get that done. Okay. Well, it's we'll a couple hours online. Yeah. We yeah. will call you. It's a big PowerPoint. Yeah. Have you done anything? Mm -hmm. No. I'm not the only one that doesn't know about it. Thank you. <laughs> I feel much better now. So, okay. <clears throat> Are we supposed to turn in certificates to Missy then when we finish? Yes. Okay. Now, you're way above that. You don't need, all you need is the one in the 700 for her. Okay. But, you know, if you want to turn them all in and give her a copy of all of them, you can. Okay. <clears throat> we can all delegate to Steve for hours. <laughs> <laughs> I sit next to him, see, so that counts for more, right? We'll fill in for you. Yeah. Is, that, is that kind of like Gerard? <laughs> it's delegating. <laughs> okay. Well, we tried. You get that one? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, WPPA uh, union negotiations uh, start October 3rd. Um, so we'll be starting in that. Should supposed to have an agreement before the budget is approved. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. Um, did you get the league's uh, thing on personal property tax and TIDs? So is that the October 10th one? There's one on October 10th. It, it said you sent a thing out, but I've, um, a meeting in Wap Wapan or somewhere. Uh, that, that could be it. All I noted was is that 
the state statute requires that municipalities be fully reimbursed for the loss of personal property tax. DOR has determined that they do not have to do that. So instead of, when you do a calculation in TIDS, you do the full tax levy on the increment, which is usually 22, 23. They're only doing the local one, which is about seven, seven and a half. So we're losing, you know, a substantial amount of money. Enough that TID number four might be a dis become a distressed TID. Hmm. <clears throat> now what? What do we have to do about that? Well, you need to convince your legislators that they need to do something about that. <clears throat> I know that the mayors and and the administrators in Dodge County met with their representatives, one of which was Scott Fitzgerald. <clears throat> I heard it was a, a, a boisterous conversation. <clears throat> uh, we are, as we had discussed, working on the medical director. Hopefully we'll have that in place shortly. Uh, the Riverwood proposal, which is, Brooks, which is uh, American Way, part of it is American Way from uh, Industrial Drive to Brookstone Drive. Um, we're working on construction plans. We need a cost estimate, and then we'll finalize a special assessment waiver so that we can have that bid this in January here shortly. Uh, we've acquired the Jaeger property, and uh, so we're going to need to put together an RFP. We, we do have the environmentals on it now, okay. and, uh, and so we need to put an RFP together for a demo on that site to clean it up. Rock Lake Activity Center agreement is moving forward. Dan's finalizing a couple items that we're negotiating out. Um, we've been asked, and I th I'm assuming Steve has looked at it as a lake use ordinance. Some of it's boating, some of it's some mm -hmm. other stuff. Um, are there any other questions or comments? Uh, one question, I'm sure this is probably way too early, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, we had this incident last week in Mass Massachusetts with uh, Lawrence and Andover having natural gas explosions. Has there been any discussion as to possible causes or so on? I'm sure it's very early, but... Uh, and they overpressurized the main, and so gas started leaking out into the homes, and then a furnace or a hot water heater kicked in, it ignited them and set them off. Must have been just awful. Is there any way to prevent that? I would not know. That's, that's beyond my expertise. That's a gas company engineer's job. Um, I know people are a little bit antsy now over it, you know, for years and years and years, if we were, we did a lot of digging in the ground, you cut a gas service, you crimped it over and kept on digging and called the gas company and they showed up in four or five hours, nobody cared. Now it's like, okay, you evacuate everybody, you uh, call the gas company and you hope they're there within three hours. Uh, but uh, it's, it's, a totally different mindset right now because of a couple of incidents, but historically it wasn't anything like that. And both of those were really um, what ha what got into the buildings. The one in Sun Prairie, they started penetrating the buildings through the sanitary sewer system. Yeah, so much going on. So, well, it doesn't sound like you have a lack of things happening, Steve. No, and that's not all of it, but I'm not talking about all of it here. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's a lot to keep going. And with the weather not cooperating, uh, now, we're not going to complain, cause given the fact that we could be in North or South Carolina or Virginia, and we're not, thank you, but... Still, it, the weather has taken a toll on our timelines. And uh, 
ask that the citizens be patient. We'll get to the roads and things as soon as we can get the equipment here because they're being called out for Dane County and north of there, right? Well, pretty much west, north and west, out north to and west. Baraboo and, and mm -hmm. uh, where, where all the way out to Prairie. The Duchenne. roads are in a lot worse shape than the ones we're fixing. So, yeah, they've been washed out by the floods. Yeah, so hopefully, we hope the weather will hold out through the fall, so we can get as many roads done as we can, right? And. Uh, to a certain extent, I'm very grateful that we didn't do South Main Street. Because we would have been sitting there with it wide open now and nobody to do any work in it. Well, we'd have gotten about to high school and we'd be done. And it would have been stuck in front of a lot of people's houses for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it's a blessing in disguise. Well, somebody up there knows what they're doing, so little faith, right? Well, Steve, thank you for your update on that. Um, anybody else have questions for Steve? Okay. Um, moving on. Acceptance of minutes of the Police and Fire Commission for May 17th, 2018, and the Parks Board for July 18th, 2018, and they will be placed on file. Uh, Council business, 8A. Discussion on Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan, and I believe that's Rob, right? Okay, and then Rob. Yep, I'd like to uh, oh, make okay. a motion to suspend the rules so that the park board can address the council. Okay. Second. Second, okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Okay, call the roll. Mr. Foster. Aye. Mr. Fritch. Aye. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mrs. Fritch. Aye. Motion passed four zero. Just for clarification, uh, staff can always speak, but the other members wouldn't be able to. So right. now you all can talk and tell <laughs> us what you think. How about that? So thank you for coming tonight. I'm Vicki Wickliffe, Chair of the Parks Board. Uh, in July, I sent a letter to the uh, council, which was included in one of your earlier meeting packets. In case it was overlooked or if um, you have any questions, I'm going to read the letter tonight to be sure you're all aware of it. I drafted it on behalf of the Parks Board. It's dated July 26, 2018. Dear City Council Members, Commons Park is the centerpiece of downtown Lake Mills and is the location for many popular events such as Town and Country Days, Arts Festival, Knickerbocker Ice Festival, Fall Festival, Relay for Life, Easter Egg Hunt, Band Concerts, and Farmer's Market. Volunteers have added to its attractiveness by maintaining flower beds. Residents of other communities have commented on how lucky the residents of Lake Mills are to have this community asset. At its July meeting, the Lake Mills Parks Board discussed wear and tear on Commons Park and potential solutions. The board would like to become more involved in current and future use of the park. After looking at upcoming road work and tree maintenance scheduled in and around Commons Park, the board decided to be proactive and work on a master plan that would facilitate the best use of the park. To begin, the board will create a list of events held in the park and groups that have expressed interest in using the park with the intent to solicit their input. The Parks Board hereby requests permission and financial resources to hire an engineering or consulting firm to help formulate a master plan for Commons Park. Sincerely, Vicki A. Wycliffe, Chair, Lake Mills Parks Board. Thank you for refreshing us with the letter. Appreciate that. And with part of that, um, 
what we'd like to do is maybe see if we could work with you on that and that council here is we have the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan which was acted on back in 2015 14 14 um, it's for a 15-20 plan is it the park board would like to be involved in when this gets updated if we could get some resources to start working on this this next year so that it's ready to go for 2020 when this one expires and because um, there's things on the list that have come up over the years I know a lot of the items here haven't really changed a whole lot but just to update the parks and where we think some of the projects are as far as the park board's concerned um, the park board would like to be involved in that engineering study a little bit to have some input into that when they work with the engineering firm so that's kind of the basis for the letter is that we'd like to get this recreational plan updated that we already have in place and to, Tec to be involved technically in technically it's not an engineering firm it's a planner planner okay yeah so um, it wouldn't be strand they don't do planning um, but me and hunt does I think he's a planner <laughs> <laughs> right. but that's what they'd like to be in, involved in that process over this next year and to get some resources for it I've got a question has there been any discussion on the parks board as to generating some ideas about what could be done Technically, I'm not on the park board. <clears throat> I just attend the meetings. Um, park board is a recommendation to you. Uh, I think about a year ago, we did a park tour with all the park board members. We do have a list of improvements that we want to do in our existing park system right now. Uh, park board for the past couple of months has been discussing um, how we can kind of get those on the table, get them moving forward. Uh, Steve Fields brought up the recreation outdoor plan was coming due so this kind of works real well together um, that we'd like to incorporate this with that plan so for the next five years um, not only existing parks are going to be improved but anything you know for the future developments can be done also so there's nothing as far as so you do have some concrete I have things that on your wish list that you'd like to, to do. Correct. Okay. So how do most communities go about this? Do we see other communities work this into their budget or do they actually sit down and and do a, a master plan and then use that to feed the budget? Most often the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan is developed in order to apply for grants mm -hmm. because this, the state will require that you have one in order to be able to apply for s grants in that category. Um, <clears throat> so generally what we do is we slide through the process of um, impact fees, fees in lieu of and grants to improve the parks. I mean, you can love Wallace Park set as a mm -hmm. swamp for a number of years before it actually got developed and those types of things. But it did, we, <clears throat> I think there were <laughs> probably four different comprehensive plans for the facilities in Wallace Park and they've changed substantially over the years. but. Eventually, it pretty much followed right down the line with what was proposed in one of the last outdoor comprehensive plans. Um, they could be fed into the budget as part of the as a uh, part of the budgeting process. Obviously, it as we've discussed. Parks and Recreation isn't a core function. Right. So when you're looking at core functions and you're looking at repairing streets and, and uh, uh, making sure that you do a lot of the other public improvements that are required out of the core process or keeping the police department up or the fire department up, those are, those are really considered core processes as is running a council. Um, so... <clears throat> Do we have things that we 
kind of keep in line on those types of ideas? Yes, there, you know, we have equipment for bikes at the end of a street. At some point in time, it was supposed to be incorporated into a park. At some point in time, I assume we will make that adjustment. We're supposed to have su substantially more parking at Wallace Park. Those are kinds of things that we're trying to to continue to incorporate into the budget process and get moving along and and uh, through the processes. But <laughs> have we ever just um, budgeted straight up for park improvements? Not that I know of. You know, we've always done like. Uh, When we did the baseball diamonds at Wallace Park, 50% uh, of it was done by the school district. Um, and we had some donations from Rotary and the Lions Club that made certain types of improvements out there that were up and above us. Um, that was probably the largest project that we've ever done right out of our general fund. Um, you know, we've done some budgeting for like at the bandstand. We put up yep. some money for the bandstand and, and that type of stuff. But as other than normal maintenance, now, you know, the proposal for Sandy Beach would be along the same lines. That whole thing is a parks issue, um, as is the mill pond. Uh, those were two big items that were parks items. Now, when they did the Brookstone development, how did they incorporate the parks in the development? Was that something with the development, or did the city yes, we required the developer to dedicate a certain amount of real estate, okay. and then the impact fees were kind of the driving force behind uh, funding the improvements. Because yep. just to kind of use an example, one of the items that the parks we've talked about is the new development going out on north of Tyrenia. There, that's going to create a lot more use at the Fayville Park. And that's one of our parks that we don't have any restrooms or um, pavilion. Mm -hmm. And you go down there now, they're using it for flag football and they're having yep. organized events there. So we're seeing a lot of use and there's really no facilities there. So that's an opportunity where that might be, you know, that's one of the suggestions that we're looking at is that that area we're gonna see a lot more growth and use and we might need to throw a little bit of resources at that sure. one. So there's a couple opportunities that we wanna have the ability to kind of put a wish list together to present it to the council. So what type of dollar figure do you think we would be looking at in a ballpark to have a planner work with the team to come up with stuff like this? If I remember correctly, the last outdoor comprehensive recreation plan was about 3500 um, But if you were looking at a lot more detail in it, you know, they go through and they do the, the population statistics. They locate all the existing facilities. They um, do ranges of population growth and where the next set of parks should be located and what type of park it should be, if it's a neighborhood or a community or a pocket and those types of things. I don't necessarily look at the full build out. That's generally a more detailed study. So it might be more expensive than what the last one was. Um, there is a little bit of that in here. They gave some general dollars concepts. for, if you were to add restrooms and stuff, there's some ballpark figures in this one. So it might be adding a little bit more detail to it, but there is some of that basics in here. Now the, the stand at Wallace Park, is that 100,000 or 75? The, the concession stand at Wallace? Total. Yeah. The, total, the whole building was over 200. Yeah, but that was pretty substantial. I'm looking at what you're looking at could be limited, yeah. but I, I guess I'm just trying to get to the point that the best way for for us to understand if we need to actually look at budgeting some money towards this is to follow through with 
this plan? The one Would that we currently be have? Follow through with what they're requesting right now. To basically to redo this. and update the the plan. Would you say that's a fair statement? The only, it's about the only way you're going to get it done in a timely fashion. Yeah, and having the, the information you need to make smart decisions. You know, help you prioritize where to where to make the investments. Yeah. Also, it was mentioned earlier that the reason we did a plan to begin with was to apply for grants. Do are there any out there now? I mean, I know that's dried up pretty much, but are there grants to apply for at the current time? Mark could probably answer that better than I can, but I know that when we were looking at the Sandy Beach project, there were several of them that we were looking at applying for. Okay, so there, so there would be some value from that point of view to spend this money? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's good until 20 Right, but um, that's going to be real soon. <laughs> right, I, I don't disagree that in you know in doing it, especially if you get more detailed, um, that it would be advantageous. Well, and let's see, this was oh five to twenty, fifteen years. Yeah, so it was done in May of fourteen. So we'd be looking like twenty to thirty five, fifteen years. No. They're only good for five years. 20 to 25. Oh, that's 15. I saw it first. I couldn't see that far. Okay, zero. I, okay, so five years. Boy, that goes fast. Amazingly fast. Yeah, I know. Especially you, the older you get. You can't do it for 10? Well, I'm thinking saving <laughs> some money, you know, for the yeah, expand the out. No, huh? Yeah, park yeah, park plans. Are specifically set at five years, so they generally stay eligible for grants for okay. implementation. Foiled again. So, okay. All right. So five years. Um, so is this something that we would discuss at our budget meeting after this meeting? Because that's we'd have to uh, we'd have to adjust something in the budget, right? Because mm -hmm. right well, now. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, we could also just ask staff to. Get us some numbers to figure out what it is, and mm -hmm. go but from we'd there. Have to but pass yeah. it in the budget that we're yep. looking at now. So, and that would be that would meet with what you were hoping for. Correct. Get okay. the study moving. Okay. Do we need any um, motion of any sort? Because no. what do we have here? We're it's just, a discussion yeah. item. We can't do any motion nope. anyway. So, uh, can I ask? Uh, the parks board uh, were you following did what did what we say make sense to you is that did that meet with what you were hoping for yeah i mean ultimately the goal is come up to the mic Sorry. that's okay <laughs> thank you i mean ultimately the goal is to you know have the plan out there in place because first of all you need a plan otherwise you're just throwing darts out there right so have the plan in place and then look at a priority list of things that we can say okay here here's where we feel are the, the biggest priorities of of the park systems knowing that there is growth that's going to happen knowing that some of these facilities are getting older um, are going to need you know as they increase in maintenance or usage with the parks um, that you know just just looking at all that that we can help prioritize a lot of those things um, you know because that is our job looking at a lot of that stuff to bring it to you guys for you know as the advisory board that we are to say this is where we feel that um, uh, the money's best well spent based off of the plans and then um, you know go from there okay do we have his name already uh, okay I, I could we have your name and address and would you sign the sheet in yes front of you? yes so there were, there were some other conversation Rob about the Commons Park particularly and being able to defend our territory, right? What are we defending? <laughs> Where's the war? I didn't know about it. The, the, the original conversation with Park Board 
a number of months ago was regarding the number of events we've had going on down in Commons Park mm -hmm. and the discussion of we have a segment of the population that wants that to be the showplace of Lake Mills. You know, how do you run all these activities in a park and make it your show place? You know, the place gets beat up. So that's where Park Board came in and discussed how can we make Commons Park not only usable, but also be able to maintain the beauty of it. Um, that's where their letter came forward requesting money to kind of, let's figure a plan out for Commons Park. So, you know, with that, and then all of a sudden the, the, this outdoor plan came up and oh, okay. we decided let's bundle this all together and work on this as a big package then. So do you think that's a good idea, what we're talking about is? Exactly. And you're fine with that? Yep. And your board is fine yep. with that? Yep, yep. And Steve had mentioned the electrical up there, um, yes. which mm -hmm. Paul Hermanson had brought up. You know, let's look at doing, redoing the electrical pedestals. And we said, let's mm -hmm. wait a minute let us take a look at the entire park. How do we want to design this park, you know, to utilize it and yet keep it beautiful? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're hoping to come, you know, say in a year from now, um, come with this plan to you, you understand it and away we go. <coughs> the reason Paul brought it up is because we have people in there working right now and with us going underground, we have to change a bunch of stuff in there anyways. It would be a lot cheaper to do it now than it will be to wait. Um, is there any happy medium between those two philosophies? Are, it, well, are there depends. any things that we, <laughs> we that, that, is there anything that the park board and yourself know that you would like that would be better to do now while we're doing this mess that we're doing in the park? Park board would like to meet with all the civic groups and all the activities that go on in the park feel them out, see what their needs are, that we are not putting pedestals in locations that they're never going to be utilized. Mm -hmm. um, we want to see what their needs are first. Um, that will make our job a little bit easier to design what they're looking for. Um, our idea is not to shut the park off for use. Our idea is what part of the park can we make usable and what parts can we maintain you know, as our green lush you know, areas um, and not have them just completely beating up the entire park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Part of this discussion came from the chamber attending the parks meeting also, trying to get a list of what's already in place or the groups that are using it so they can market it to other groups in the time when it's not being used. So they want to increase the amount of use in the park also. So the chamber is looking for some of this feedback so they can go out and continue to market Lake Mills. So we're trying to work with all these different groups at, at one time to improve the parks. Now we also have private people who have weddings there and so forth. Are those, do we just fit them in between all these other things? Correct. As far as scheduling, our civic groups you know, schedule usually early in the year. They need to know their dates, need to get all their ducks in a row. Um, and then we don't allow people to, to rent the band shelter until after the beginning of January. Um, and then, yeah, then we just piece them in as we can. Mm -hmm. Most of them fill out special events permits, the civic organization. Correct. Not all of them, but most of them. Most of them. And then privates have to register with the office. Correct. And usually by January 1st, we know all the events that are going on in the park, the civic group events. Okay. Just like to say uh, thank you for looking forward to, to the future and trying to have some kind of vision for our parks and so on. I think that's that's a great idea. I encourage more of it. Well, and I think our park system overall is one of the st strongest drawing points of the city. Okay when people come in and they see that. And then um, I just had a correspondence from a new person in town who was impressed with what was available here. And yeah, we definitely are not behind. We're you know, I'm glad to hear that. And I think that's what a park board is trying to, to do is to keep up our existing park yeah. system, not always think of expanding, 
and well, forgetting right. what we already have mm -hmm. um, because we do need to improve what we have things get older things wear out yeah. and we do need to improve these things and the city does have the mandate of keeping up buildings now that we didn't have 20 years ago we do the best we can yeah but I mean yep. it, it's a more of a priority today than it was 20 years ago correct and we actually put money away on a yearly basis for that I believe we better be we do have we do have a facilities budget <laughs> mm -hmm. you know right. building budgets mm -hmm. and then we're also very fortunate with the um, volunteer groups in the city like the Rotary and the Lions and the foundation and blah blah I'm sure I'm missing tons of people but all those groups have fundraisers and they donate money toward things and sometimes they come to you or Steve and say what do you need right or Correct. What, what should we be raising money for and we get a lot of that and we really appreciate it yeah it, it, it's the it's a crucial piece mm -hmm. so so did we do what we have to do on this item as far as I know as mm -hmm. far as you know, Steve you think it's okay yeah very good okay well thank you so much again for coming thank you. all of you and, and by the way the uh, Commons Park over the years has changed dramatically in its use <laughs> the local history says that in the 1880s it used to be a sheep meadow Mm -hmm. And then it was the gathering spot for the cattle before they were marched down South Main to get on the train. And they'd gather them <clears throat> down there and away they'd go and never to be seen again. So anyway, okay. And it, before that, it was part of um, Black Hawk's encampment on his travels through the area. <laughs> trail. Yep. So it's got quite the history. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on, item 8B, resolution 1836. Uh, would you like, would you read the title for that? Ms. Resolution 18-36, authorizing the sale of city-owned real estate located in the Lake Mills Business Park. Okay. Okay. Um, do we have a motion for that resolution? So moved. I have second. A mo and I have a motion and a second. Now we can have discussion on the resolution. Okay, any, who wants to talk about this? Is this Dan or is sure. this, somebody please We've do that. We've received an offer to purchase from uh, Lewis Station Winery uh, for nine and a half acres at the southern point of uh, CP Avenue in the industrial park um, their plan on that site from what I understand is to uh, build a, a, a rather large facility that uh, could encompass uh, production distribution um, as well as kind of a, a meeting place type of uh, atmosphere for the winery um, I believe you all know uh, Lewis station and, and Rob Lewis the, the principal there um, what what questions would you have about the offer to purchase? And this is just for the 9.5 acre lot, correct? Correct. Okay. It's a part of a larger lot right now. Mm -hmm. We survey that off the 9.5 acres that he desires. Well, we talked about this in executive session earlier yep. to go over the conditions and, and what we are looking at. It's a lot that... Um, has some created wetlands on it because of a ditch that was filled in and we fixed that but the survey still in place so there's there's some difficulties there um, so they're looking at that um, putting a structure in the one spot and, and using the rest of the open space uh, for events similar to what Tyranina brewery does and there's they got a large area and they, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, hopefully it'll be a great addition uh, down there at the end of CP Avenue. We'll probably have to extend CP Avenue 400 feet a little oh. bit closer to the railroad track. We'll get a little closer to getting it through. <laughs> Not very far, but um, I just would like to say that I'm very happy to see that they're willing to build here and buy this land and build here. 
like to keep them in the community, and uh, I think it's a great idea. Will that force us to move the skate park stuff that's down there now? Just move it down the road for a while? Can we do that? Uh, no, I don't think we'll move it down the road. I think we'll put a pad in somewhere in the Wallace Park. Well, okay. Probably more appropriate there. Yeah. In the complex. Eventually that road will go through, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. We hope someday. <laughs> At the rate we're it's going. a little bit more remote there. If we move it to the other spot, it has better access and more eyes on it. Sure. Good idea. Makes sense. Okay. Any other discussion? Otherwise, we'll call the question. Do roll call, please. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thank you. And Good luck. Yes. Okay, resolution <coughs> 1837. Uh, would you read that title, please? Resolution 18 37, approving boundary and project plan for tax incremental district number seven, City of Lake Mills in Jefferson County, Wisconsin. Okay, do we have a motion to approve this resolution? Yeah, I'll make the motion to approve Resolution 1837. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, would Steve, would you be the one to just... I'll start. <clears throat> it's been almost a year ago now that you, as a council, received a letter from uh, landowners on the north side asking for us to put in a TID, and you directed staff to do that. Uh, we put a plan in place and um, <clears throat> did all the financials and have met with the Joint Review Board and the Planning Commission and now have a resolution before you as required by state statute. Um, <clears throat> all the documents that are required are, should be included in the, uh, the uh, TID report and Mark here is here to go over the TID report if you so desire. <laughs> all 70 pages. <laughs> He doesn't go quite that in depth. Yeah. I don't kind of gives you conceptual as... why he, it requires 70 pages. Mm -hmm. yeah. One thing I would like you to cover a little bit because it was at first it was a little confusing to me and the planning commission <clears throat> about the, the overlapping tids and how that how those work when the one falls off. So if, if you could go into mm -hmm. a little bit of detail exactly how that how that's going to work so everybody else here understands it. I think that'd be appreciated. The um, What page is that on? That's, that's not necessarily in the report. You'd oh. have to look at the project plan and understand how the project plan reads. But to make it short and simple is, is that we're overlaying TID 7 on a portion of TID 4. And there, <clears throat> there are substantial properties within TID number 4 that haven't developed yet. <laughs> and we're reaching the end of our expenditure period and there are significant pieces of infrastructure that need to go into that area in order for it to develop. Uh, namely the extensions of Birch and Elm Street north of County Highway B into those properties. So <clears throat> we've kind of designed TID 7 so that um, it can help extend the expenditure period for those types of public improvements. But it also allows TID 7 to help TID number 4 maintain their payments. So we have the option of, you know, if there's a property built and we don't have a lot of expense in it, we can move money over to, to TID number 4 to help cover the costs of... Because theoretically, when we did TID number 4, all this property would have developed and it would have all been generating increment that would have helped TID number four pay for the improvements that we have in place. Now that we're, take, now that we're at the end of the extent, uh, expenditure period, that, that's not going to happen. So we needed to figure out how to kind of balance that out. So we give ourselves another 27 years to develop this TID. Now the expenditure period isn't the full 27 but it it gives us a number of years to continue out it also gives us the option of moving money into tid4 to make sure that they have the capability of making their 
payments because it was financed on the theory that all that real estate would develop. And so we're trying to make sure that we're covered. We would have been in great shape, but for two things, Walgreens and the personal property tax. So those are making it really close and we were worried and the payments on those on TID number four was backloaded. So while we were doing a pretty good job, I, I was worried and so I had them do a financial plan and a project plan that incorporated these concepts into it so we would, we would make sure that we were covered. Is this done in other cities too? Yes. Okay. We did it ourselves in TID number six and number two. Okay. I don't remember that. <clears throat> On the map <clears throat> that you've got accompanying this, <clears throat> I noticed the town has got several islands that would be kind of surrounded by city. Does that cause any problems or anything? Um, and by problems, what do you mean? I mean, from an annexation standpoint, it would, but because we have a municipal boundary agreement, it doesn't. Um, does it cause problems with having town properties in the middle of the city? Yes. Services. Yeah, I mean, but in this case, they're mainly along um, County Highway V, mm -hmm. which we haven't accepted uh, maintenance on yet. So it's a little bit less expensive for us. Um, they still have to call the county for their sheriff and the town for their police. And, and um, so it's, it's not as expensive as it would be if it were on a street that we now fully maintained. Um, but I mean, they're, <clears throat> There are always, the way it's set up in Wisconsin, there's no clean way to do this. It is just an ugly process. There are a lot of better options out there in, in the United States, and we've adopted the worst. That'll cause some problems like uh, <coughs> police and EMS, or I should say, well, police primarily when they get called, whether it's town or city. <coughs> We cover a lot of it already anyway, so I don't know that that's a big deal. Okay. Generally what you're going to look at is we're going to have to do an, a special annexation fee so that when they annex they have to pay the water and the sewer. Um, so those types of things will be incorporated into it. So uh, that's not unusual. I mean, currently Quick Trip has paid the cost of the water main from the cemetery to um, the main street intersection. And when people annex and they pay that fee, we take it in and then send quick, quick trip a check. Uh, so it's, it's um, in this case, it would, it would come to the tip. There isn't any property in here that still hasn't been annexed, is there? I thought we had all that. You can't put property that isn't annexed yeah. in a TID. That's why, so that's why we. That's why we're doing the annexations yep. here, and everything else is in the city. Okay. So, so Mark, um, you want to start? And Mark, do his little spiel, and we'll run from there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just give you a brief overview I mean Steve said kind of the most of it so I just I'll go through kind of the main points of things that must be found with a TID project plan uh, this is a mixed-use TID uh, I believe that's the same as what four was uh, intended primarily for uh, industrial commercial and residential land uses uh, one of the caveats with mixed use is that only 35 percent of the in of the total land area can be devoted to newly platted residential. Uh, so that's something we, have, of course, have to meet. Uh, and that's some of the um, sort of north side neighborhood plan or some of the revised plan looks into that, kind of keeps that sort of in check. Um, so 
Aside from that, it also must be found by state statute. Uh, our state statute requires that improvement of the area is likely to enhance significantly the value of the value of substantially all the other real property in the district. Uh, generally, we've been uh, working with Ehlers, uh, same financial consultant the city has been using for all the other TIFs to ensure that. Um, it's also one of the reasons we do this as uh, we set up the project plan revolving around, uh, in some cases, a neighborhood plan. The Northside Neighborhood Development Plan, which you guys are all familiar with, uh, this is essentially one of the tools to help implement that, much like the CORP is to implement improvements to specific parks. Um, the development assumptions generally pretty conservative, um, but you can read those specifically in the plan. Uh, I won't go through those right now. What he means is, is that we're liberal with the expenses and conservative with the revenues. Yes. So it means that we, we estimate high on the expenses and low on the revenues. That gives us a better chance of meeting our goals. Uh, the area is also suitable for mixed use. Uh, it's generally already zoned PB plan business, which allows for a good mix of commercial uses. Uh, it's A lot of it is ag land, which is typically very uh, suitable for development. It's generally pretty flat. It's generally already draining somewhere. Uh, so some good, good things there. Um, must be found, but for the financial assistance, assistance as provided by the city, redevelopment would not occur. Uh, if you drive by up there, you'll see a lot of the land is already for sale. Uh, there's been a lot of interest in development up there, but nobody can or wants to pay for the utilities to go up there. So, but for the city getting involved, that's the but for test you always hear, uh, development would not happen. That's everything in here, the 72 pages or whatever it is, has to prove that. Um, so that's kind of what this does. Um, the project costs relate directly to, in this case, promoting mixed-use development. Again, I turn to the Northside Development Plan and then the new sort of <coughs> revised uh, plan graphic, which uh, shows a couple new pieces of infrastructure, primarily roads, that will be going in. Um, those roads are intended generally to serve development. Uh, the exhibit shows different phasing. Uh, so there's obviously a phasing component to this. The phasing we've outlined is kind of what we see, what we think is most practical. And again, we've worked with Strand on this part of it, uh, city's engineering consultant. So the phasing that is shown is kind of what we think may be the most practical, um, but it may, you know, really phasing works out as once a piece of land is ready to go for development, then the city will uh, come in and put in the infrastructure. So the phasing is sort of subject to change in that regard. Steve, didn't, didn't uh, we mention in plan commission uh, some of the phasing was built like that because of uh, utilities that are already present to make it easier? <clears throat> some of it is. Some of it's built on the fact that we're concerned about how fast the real estate can move uh, because of extenuating circumstances. Um, so the green are um, the highly motivated sellers. So this is an area, even though we have to develop some we have to bring the water over. It basically comes across here and then across and then it comes back down and across here. So water and sewer will be and, and access the roadway has to be built in this green area first. So yes, the infrastructure drives where the phasing is. Now some of the phasing down here already has most of the infrastructure relatively close. We just have to do the, the little extenuating, the little roadways there. but. The, the fact that it hasn't moved yet, we put it in that phase two category saying 
you know, once the seller becomes highly motivated, that could move to a phase one. Because you know how we do it. We have a, we have a developer that'll come, or a, yeah, a developer come in and say, I want to build here. We look at how much increment they're going to generate, and then we take that increment and put in the public infrastructure requirement. We, we don't do the um, build it, they'll come. We do the, you tell us how much you're going to generate, and we'll tell you how much we're going to give you. So <clears throat> from that standpoint, um, these two here, they could go really fast. They could, as soon as this TIT is finalized, those two could move, and it would be an easy um, TID increment deal that, that you know, you're generating this much increment, we can provide you this much public infrastructure. Um, the north side is a little bit more difficult because there's a lot more extension of, of a large infrastructure, but there's a highly motivated seller too, as you remember, and so we looked at that, and, and there is a developer who's expressed interest, so depending on what kind of increment they can generate for us, it gives us some opportunity to say, okay, yeah, we can we can do something here. So the project costs related to phasing generally outlined on pages 17 and 18, again, working with uh, Strand, and those are tied directly to the financials that were evaluated by Ehlers. Um, so you can see that, you know, phase one generally years one and two, phase two years three and three to five, phase three years five to seven. Uh, so that's kind of how all this is put together. The last piece uh, of the statute uh, must be found the equalized value of taxable property of the district plus the value increment of all existing districts does not exceed 12% of the total equalized value of taxable property within the city. Uh, that's required for all TIDs. Uh, it's referred to, I guess, as the 12% test. And that's sort of broken down on page 4 five and seven, seven and eight. Um, and based on, I guess, what's in the project plan, uh, we, the city is meeting that requirement. So that's really kind of the overview. The public hearing was held at the plan commission in August, uh, as I understand, nobody was in attendance. Uh, the JRB was held in August as well, a couple weeks, two weeks before that. Um, so it's received approval all the way to this point. The JRB actually meets again and they have final approval. But we need your approval to get it there. Um, planning Commission. Yep. Is yeah, the the only, uh, it wasn't a sticking point, it was just a conversation piece that was brought up was about the mixed use, making sure that we stay under that 35%, and I don't think there's going to be any issues with that. No. There's a lot of open space that's right. there. It keeps it under that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the only point of conversation. So... Are they adding any recreational area on the north side there in that phase one? Uh, what we do is, well, commercial never, commercial industrial never provides recreation space. Right. Uh, it would be the residential development. And yes, we would look at that um, based on the development. Is there some residential going to go up there on that north end? Or? Yes. Yep. Mainly it's multifamily. Okay. But it is residential. So yeah, we'd look at some recreational space up there. If it's multi-family, then it needs it even more. Well, um, yeah, I'm not going to argue about that. But generally, what we look at is what type of recreation space. It's just green space. If it's, or... if it's a community-wide one, how many of those do you need? And how many can you maintain? So right. Wallace Park is a community-wide one. It's going to have ballparks and soccer fields. Um, so what are you going to put on the north side that complements that? And I think, well, the existing uh, corp does that. It tells us what we want on the north side and where to place it and those types of things. It also uh, 
each unit in the building of a multifamily pays impact fees. So if there's one building but it has 12 units, that's 12 separate impact fees. Is there going to be a consideration for pedestrian traffic increasing across the interstate there then? Or how are they going to expand that or accommodate uh, We've it? looked at that at multiple different practices. And when they, the preferred option was to, uh, Actually, this one might be better. Is to um, come across right here. So there'd be a pedestrian bridge or something that would go across. Yep. Okay. The, the north side is pretty high, so it would just come straight across over the interstate, and then you'd have a ramp coming down to the county highway V to the sidewalks there, and that would that was the preferred option. That's something we could probably get a grant for. At least at one point, there was a lot of money for that type of stuff. Okay. I don't know if there is anymore. Um, so that would only be pedestrian. Pedestrian bike. Yeah, that would not I mean, be would not be for cars. Not vehicles. No. Not not cars. Nope. No, the only two accesses will be 89 and A, and uh, it would be almost exactly consistent with the existing transportation plan. Um, it wouldn't move the bridge over past to line up with with uh, Owen Street yet, but okay. uh, all the other phases of it would be in place. Uh, then the only, the only two major items, well, three, would be to get CP through to, to 89 on the south side mm -hmm. to... Um, take that three-way stop out at Owen and CP and yeah. convert that into a curve yeah, and then flip the overpass. But two of those are extremely expensive. I think if I remember correctly, the overpass, our share of it would have been like $40 million. And uh, if we do it when they're actually building the new overpass, then it's not much. We just have to buy the real estate. But if this time it was just a, a maintenance work on the overpass. It was like, well, if you want to relocate it, you pay all the costs of relocating, and then we just contribute what we would have contributed for maintaining the bridge. And, of course, you, you know what it would cost just to get down to. It would be a million dollars to run CP just down to Unsaven, much less down to G. Are we ready to vote on this? Okay. Thank you for the presentation. And would you call the roll? Mr. Fields? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. That takes us on to item 8D, Resolution 1838. Would you read that title, please? Resolution 18-38, withdraw from the Wisconsin Public Employers Group Health Insurance Program. Okay. And who's the spokesperson for this tonight? Oh, before we do that, do we yeah. have a motion to? So moved. Okay. And Second. 18-38. Okay, 18-38. Got it. So we have a motion and a second. Now, who's going to? Dan, are you speaking for this or Steve? No, I've got it. Okay. Um, we are recommending that we um, have a little problem here. Move to the Jefferson Dodge or the Dodge Jefferson uh, Consortium for Health Insurance. And we've received bids and we have put together a plan which was gone over uh, before with you. Um, we find that even under the current circumstances with the new dollar figures out, it still saves us about $72,000 uh, annually, and it provides as good a coverage as the employees would have got anyone on the, the other one. Um, as you'll note, the, 
the low cost leader for, for the state this year was uh, Dean Health Insurance. <clears throat> so it's almost exactly the same. It's a little bit more complicated in our situation. They have an HSA, but they actually have less costs. Than, well, no, the state plan, they w Dean would have been zero too. But in this case, it's still zero. And um, we're with the same provider and uh, so I, I don't know that uh, and we save money and they come up just as well off uh, if, as if they were under the state plan so uh, from that standpoint we recommend uh, making the switch for uh, staff will confidentiality of their situations be pretty much the same as they were under the uh, old system Yes, there are, there are a few minor changes here and there. Some lose, some gain, um, but it, I don't believe it's substantial in either direction. Um, so we're we're pretty confident that it's a it's a good deal. The consortium is in for four years. We've got a guarantee on that whole time. Um, the way it works is, is if you withdraw from the state plan, you can't go back for four years. So we've got to guarantee what our costs will be for four years. And if we find that the state plan is what we want to go back to, we can go back to the state plan. Uh, That's good. So um, I, I didn't see any losses here. Is there going to be a lot of staff having to change doctors no not a lot uh, dean and, and courts have pretty much overlap here um, and uh, like i said it was that most of them were going to switch to dean um, under the state plan anyways in fact i, I would bet almost all of them do because um, the they would have to pay like two hundred dollars a month to have the courts plan next year. So, um, if we act on this tonight, does it go into effect tomorrow, kind of thing, or what's that? No, going? actually, what we wait for is the uh, rest of the members. Dodge County and Jefferson County to finalize their votes and Jefferson, the city of Jefferson and the city of Beaver Dam. <clears throat> and then we submit to the state at the required timeline um, the resolution to withdraw and fill out the app, uh, correct paperwork. And then we start working with uh, M3 to, and uh, Health, Dean Healthcare to make the transition. They have what they call a transition team and they come in and they look at your health issues and who your doctors are and then they try they help you move from one health insurance plan to the other to get all the correct care and if if they can't provide the care you need then they set up a process for you know you being able to stay with your doctor so that should all be done by january 1st when this actually goes into effect if we do do it I, i'm not going to absolutely guarantee it yet i i do believe Jeff i know jefferson county has already made the switch yeah jefferson county has resolutions from uh september 11th uh dodge county and the city of jefferson are actually voting on this right now uh, kind of at the same time as we are right right now. is there anybody who's said that they were interested who's now developed cold feet yes uh watertown and whitewater and fort and fort so are they staying with the state they're staying with the state. And the entire consortium really hinges on um, Jefferson County and Dodge County. If those two entities jump in, then the pool is large enough to support the bid that Dean presented, and it's, it's a go, basically. And so if there aren't enough to do it, we stay where we are? Okay, so, and this, this motion that we have on the table will just not be... The there's a contingency in the motion that would afford us basically the ability to 
withdraw this resolution if the consortium isn't formed or if there's a reason down the road as a contingency mm -hmm. that we're no longer interested. Yeah. The timeline here is pretty tight. A decision ultimately is going to be made relatively so, quickly. All right. So we have to do it now, but if something turns up that is a problem, we can do what we need to do. Yeah, staff will just not submit the paperwork. Right. And that's really what it hinges on, submitting right. to the state. If we don't submit from. to the state, then, then we're not withdrawn. Okay. The <clears throat> All right. It'll change the budget. We'll have to go back in and do some work on the budget. Mm -hmm. but, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Are we ready to vote on this one? Anybody else have questions? Steve, uh, Doug, do you have a question? No? Call the roll. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Motion passed 4-0. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see what's here. Now we're on E. Right. Resolution 1839. Would you read that title, please? Resolution 18 39, approving intergovernmental cooperation agreement to establish the Dodge Jefferson Consortium for purposes of purchasing insurance benefits and other employee benefits. So now this is connected with the last one, right? So do we have a motion to approve resolution 1839? So moved. And second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or did we cover this pretty well? It was covered in the first memo, so there was no additional memo included. It's pretty much a, they go hand in hand. If That's what I thought. I mean, since we did the If you withdraw from the state, you have to join the consortium. Got it. So this one goes, if, since we did the other one, if we don't do this, it would negate the last one. It would make it, yeah, I would, I would recommend that not. Would make no sense. No. Yeah, none. Well, we wouldn't want to do that, so. Any discussion, otherwise we'll just do a vote. Go ahead with the vote. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4-0. Okay, so that was just the um, the establishment of the consortium itself that would take care of this. F, Resolution 1840, would you read that title, please? Resolution 18-40, Resolution Requesting Exemption from County Library Tax. Okay, I, is there a motion to approve this one? So moved. And a second. second. Okay, got my motion and my second. This one is kind of um, housekeeping, right? Yes. This is uh, make sure that we don't pay an extra tax to the county that we already pay locally. We're all in favor of this motion. <laughs> Anybody have questions about it? Okay. When you're ready, you can call the roll. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Right down the road there. Okay. F, I mean G, Ordinance 1193A. Would you read that one, please? Now, this is, this is the third reading, but we're not, we're going to, do we treat it just like a third reading and then yes. deal with the yep. other? Okay. Treat it just like a third reading and then table it. All right. So let's uh, do what you have to read for a third reading. Please. I'll read the, the title for it, but I do just want to point out that this did become a, it was amended, and the only um, change to the ordinance from the first and second readings was in the title that we actually break out the parcel um, identification numbers as parcel A, B, and C. When we submit the application to the state, we are very clear that it's A, B, and C, and so the ordinance has to reflect that as well. Ordinance 1193A, an ordinance annexing territory to the city of Lake Mills, Jefferson County, Wisconsin. Parcel identification numbers, parcel A, 018-0713-1221-000. Parcel B, 018-0713-1223-001. Parcel C, 018-0713-1213-027. Okay. The reason we're tabling it tonight is because um, 
that took us a while to get the legal descriptions that the state would accept. And they are now submitted and the state has accepted them, but they have to review it and send back a document that says it's in the public interest before we can actually finalize the annexation. So what we're gonna ask you to do is vote to table this until the next meeting when we should have that approval from the state. And the third reading vote will be at the next meeting? Yes, okay. the final actual vote. Do we have a motion to table to the next meeting? So moved. I'll second it. A motion and a second. Any discussion on that? I don't know, table? Do you have discussion on tabling? I don't know. Anyway. You certainly can. I guess you can. Okay. Uh, call the roll. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mrs. Fritch? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay, so now it's been tabled and if we're done for tonight. Uh, no, for this item? Yes. And we don't do any more on this ordinance tonight. Not we tonight. wait for it to come up on the next one and then we'll do the vote at that time if we have everything in order. Okay. All right. Um, plus, okay, takes us to item number nine, recommendations for future agendas. Anybody have something they want put on the next? Yeah, the library board passed a motion to uh, have the council approve a donation of some massive uh, library tables to the Lake Mills Aslan Historical Society. To or from? To. They're getting rid of them at the library. We're getting rid of them at the library. The massive tables. And the Historical Society. The ones on the stage. The Historical, historical society. society said they'd, they'd be happy to take them. Yeah, I guess they have to collect them. So we need a... So that will go on the next deal. agenda? agenda. Right. There are a couple other things that we have for the agenda, but they're just standard. Yeah, but you can just put those on. Yeah. As, no. Okay. Right. Anything we need notice of? Head I don't know. Steve, are you going to sponsor that ordinance? On the... Uh, on the lake? Yeah. Okay. You you develop it based on our conversations and then call yep. Steve and have him come in and go over with him. See yep. if you'll... Is there something more specific you want to put for the minutes? Uh, it's... Um, yeah, we can talk about that later. It, it's uh, coordinating the ordinances between the town and the city to make uh, citations that are issued on the lake um, legally sustainable. Yeah, all the ordinance have to be identical in order to be enforced. Uh, I wouldn't go all. that far. That's, well, that's what we need to discuss. It's yeah. not all, it's regarding certain activities. Certain activities? And boats, right. basically. This gives me enough for the minutes, so yeah. thank yeah. you. I think that there are some other changes that we'll make relative to it. Like the skin diving isn't really a boat one, which has to be but it's a state statute, so instead of doing, you know, saying anything else, we just say something like, uh, "We, you know, that incorporate state statute into our code, and that and that covers skin same. diving, yep. and you know those types of things." Some of the other ones, I don't know that we need to regulate because they're not under that same statute. Where there's an unusual statement about if you have, if there are two communities and they make up 50% of the lake or more, which we would do, but they have to control 60% of the shoreline. shoreline. Well, they only control 51, so they need us to, to cooperate with them to control 60. So, yeah, we'd have to do the boat one, so. Uh, just trying to make enforcement easier all the way around. Yeah. Some of it's just plain dumb. If you're out skin diving outside of a, a uh, designated swimming area and you get hit by a boat you know that's why would you do that but oh well i guess this discussion for our next meeting yeah okay you don't have anything for the next meeting okay i don't have anything either for the next meeting so um 
and we'll see what else ends up on the agenda. So uh, that takes us to item number 10, right? Adjournment, and we'll adjourn this part of the council meeting. And we'll take a bathroom break, and then we're going to be, uh, then we will reopen the budget work session yes. at yep. that time. Okay? Sounds good.